hello and welcome everyone welcome back to another video on my youtube channel hope you all must be doing great till now we have discussed basic overview of bubble sort selection sort insertion sort quick sort and merge sort from today we'll be having full explanation of each sorting algorithm in this video we'll be covering various aspects of bubble sort such as its working analysis how it is coded its coding part we'll be doing the coding part in both java and python language so you learn how to code it in both the languages and thirdly what optimizations we can do to make it more efficient so that is the agenda for the day so let's get started so before trying our hands in bubble sort question arises what do we mean by sorting and why do we need to learn sorting so the answer lies in this example so here first row is an unsorted array and the second row is a sorted array here you can see that we are having elements arranged in unsorted manner they are not following a proper order and after applying bubble sort the result we going to have is that all the elements would be arranged in ascending order in a sorted manner right so this is the outcome of applying bubble sort or any sorting algorithm now let's understand what is bubble sort and try to understand its working So bubble sort is one of the simplest sorting algorithms. It works by repeatedly swapping the adjacent elements that are out of order until the entire array is sorted. So this is a very important line repeatedly swapping adjacent elements. This is the core working of bubble sort. Whenever we are having elements out of order as you can see here swapping is performed. Let me make you understand this with the help of our previous example. Let's go back to the previous slide. Here you can see this unsorted array so let's pick the first two pairs 10 and 60 they are forming ascending order right 10 is less than 60 so this pair is following ascending order so we don't need to swap them we only need to swap those elements that are out of order so now let's move on to the next two pairs 60 and 30 are they out of order yes they are out of order because they are not following ascending order 60 is greater than 30 so we would be swapping both of them they would be interchanging their respective places so this is the core working of bubble sort we go on comparing pair by pair from left to right until the entire array is sorted right see this is exactly what has been written the algorithm passes through the array from left to right comparing each pair of elements and swapping them if they are in wrong order this process is repeated until no more swaps are needed Let me give you a brief example. Let's take two pairs, a1 and a2. So these are the two pairs, a1 and a2. So to be in correct order, that is in sorted order, a1 has to be less than a2. And if a1 is greater than a2, then both of these elements are going to be interchanging their places, right? Let's look at the condition that we're gonna apply. If a1 is greater than a2, this is our condition for wrong order. Then we need to swap them. so what would happen after they interchange their positions this is the order that we would be getting a2 followed by a1 if this condition is satisfied so with this with this you have got got a brief understanding about what do we mean by repeatedly swapping the adjacent elements let's understand how it works and after this i'll be showing you the entire sorting process of bubble sort step by step on notepad So these are the steps involved in so these are the steps involved in working of bubble sort. First of all, start at the beginning of the list. Here beginning means from the left side of the array. Compare the first two elements. If they are out of order, swap them. Similarly, we would be moving to the next pair of elements and repeat the comparison and swapping them if they are out of order. Further we need to continue this process until further we need to continue this process until we reach the end of the list end of the list means the right side of the array so after the first iteration meaning after your first traversal from left to right the right most position of your array will get its correct element means the largest element of the entire array now the iteration after this would be performed to allot the second last position with the second largest element of the entire array in the second iteration also we would be moving from left to right but this time we won't be touching the last position element because it has already got its correct element therefore repeat steps 1 to 4 until no swaps are made during an entire pass through the list 
so this working would continue until the entire array is sorted so now let me show you the working of bubble sort with the help of an example on notepad so this is my array where i am having four elements that are unsorted so to sort this we need to traverse it from left to right in total there would be three traversals as we check elements in pair and there are four elements so after three traversals these last three positions are going to be having their correct element at their position and one remaining element will always be there at its correct position so let's perform the first traversal so before starting the first traversal this is the order with that we are having so the first pair 30 and 10 would be compared are they out of order see 30 is greater than 10 so they are out of order so we need to swap them 10 and 30 would exchange their places Again, 30 and 40 would be compared. Are they in correct order? Yes, they are. 30 is less than 40. So we don't need to swap them. Now, the last two pairs would be compared. 40 and 20. As we can see, they are in wrong order. Both of them would be swapped. So after the first traversal, this is the order of elements that we gonna have. Where 40 is its correct position and the last position had got its correct element. That is the largest element. So in the second traversal, as the last position has, has got its correct element or we can say it is already sorted. So let's perform the second traversal. First two will be compared, or 10 and 30 would be compared. Are they in wrong order? Both of them are in correct order. So no swapping. 30 and 20 are compared. 30 is greater than 20. Then swapping would take place. So at this juncture, we have got two elements at their correct positions. Technically, the array is sorted, but but still the third traversal would be performed in this case for the first two elements. So this is the scenario before the third traversal. Last two elements are already sorted. Only the comparison would take place between the first two elements. Are they sorted? Yes, they are. So no swapping would take place. So the final result would be. So this is my final result after performing bubble sort. Right. After covering working in detail, let's jump on to the coding part. First of all, here you can see we are having an array of elements that are unsorted. I have stored the length of my array in the variable L. Two for loops are needed. Watch carefully the outer loops. I have initialized it with i equals to 0 and the terminating condition is i less than L minus 1. So the first question that should come into your mind that why I have taken L minus 1. Remember when I was discussing on notepad. For four elements, so whatever number of elements we are going to have in our array, the termination condition of the outer loop would be L minus 1, which is length minus 1. And the last is the updation statement I plus plus. So this is the logic behind the outer loop. Let's cover the inner loop. Here you can see we have taken int j equals to 0, meaning the starting value of j will be equal to 0. And the termination condition that we are having is j is less than L minus i minus 1. Let's try to figure out the reason why I have written this condition. If you remember, after each traversal, we had an element at its correct position. So that element at that position, the disordered element used to get intact at that position. So we don't need to touch that element again in our traversal. So after every after every traversal, we would be, be reducing the scope of our traversal by introducing this minus i in the termination condition and this is j plus plus the updation statement inside the body of this inner loop here we are having the if statement which forms the core of our bubble sort algorithm elements are compared in pair and if they are out of order then they are swapped here i am having this condition that if the current statement if the current element is greater than its next element then we need to swap them and here you can see the swapping code which we use to swap the elements or we can say elements exchange their positions with the help of this code. So after seeing this code, we are having two loops, two nested for loops for which our time complexity is going to be we go of n square, which is not very efficient. The algorithm will keep on comparing elements even if the entire array is sorted. So we need to bring some optimizations in this code so that the number of operations can be reduced and the comparing of elements should stop when our array is completely sorted. Let's see what changes we can bring. So these are the changes that are needed to be brought to make this algorithm more efficient. 
I'm having a flag variable default value is false and before starting the and before starting the outer loop before every traversal its value is going to be false and whenever a swapping would take place in that traversal we would make the value of flag equals to true but what if the array is already sorted if after any traversal our array becomes sorted so this condition would never be true for a sort for a sorted array meaning this flag variable won't be having its value as true so noticing this this if statement which is having a condition flag equals to false would make this entire nested loop to break thereby reducing the number of operations of our bubble sort right in the previous code the best case time complexity was also big o of n square and the worst case time complexity was also big o of n square but after introducing these optimizations in our code the best case time complexity of this code is now is now big o of n and this time complexity would occur if our array is already sorted so let's see our python code the same thing that we have done in the java code here i am having list of elements that are unsorted variable l which would be storing the length of a two loops are there one outer loop one inner loop a flag variable a flag variable which would be checking whether whether my list is already sorted or not if it is already sorted then the loop would break right so now let's code it and see whether it produces the correct output or not so this is my java code one correction that i have made over here is that i have taken this if statement outside this for loop it has to be inside this outer for loop and outside this inner for loop right this is one correction that is needed and finally i have printed this let me now run it and see its output this is the output which is sorted ascending order so this is the python code what we have just discussed now i will be running it and seeing whether it produces the correct output or not see it is producing correct output my unsorted list is sorted so with that we have reached the end of our video hope you all must have enjoyed the video so see you in the next video thanks for watching